In 1684, Newton showed mathematically for the first time how planets moved around their stars. Kepler had, several decades earlier, provided his empirical observations of their motion, but Newton was the first to show the solutions mathematically. His solutions were ellipses, like these, with the sun at one focus. He was able to show that planets moved faster when they came closer to their stars, and he was able to predict the periods of their orbits. These predictions served as the culminating achievement of Newton's theories of motion and of gravity. After he found his solutions to this so-called two-body problem, he tried to solve the next logical problem, that of three gravitating bodies. He was never able to find a general solution, in fact, no one ever has, but the dynamics of these three body systems remains a topic of interest in astronomy to this day. To really dig into the three body problem, we need to be a little more specific about what exactly we mean by a three body problem. After all, we can predict the motion of the moon, the sun, and the earth with relatively high precision. Doesn't that count as an example of the three body problem? When we talk about a three body problem, we mean three bodies of similar, or if you're a mathematician, equal masses. Solving three body systems with very different masses allows physicists to use a little math trick known in the business as perturbation theory. It helps us handle problems where a little nudge, say like the moon, disrupts a simple system like the sun and the earth. When the bodies are all about the same mass, we can't call any one of them a small nudge. So we have to fall back on other means. In the 300 plus years since Newton, no one has been able to find such a method. There is no general solution to the three body problem and many mathematicians don't believe there ever will be. When we talk about solving the three body problem, we have to be careful about what we mean. After all, I can show you three bodies gravitating, just like this. One might ask, how can I do that without solving the problem? The three body problem is unsolved because no one has ever found a master formula to describe the motion of the three bodies given any starting situation. That is, We've never found a function, say, f of t, which we can write out with our mathematical symbols that tells us where the bodies are at any given time. We do have one thing going for us, however. The system is deterministic. That is to say that even though we can't write down the function, the function does exist. There is only one correct way for the system to evolve. There is no randomness to the motion of the bodies. Because we cannot solve the problem, we instead estimate the motion with computers. The equations that govern how the bodies move on short timescales are very simple, so it's easy to predict what happens a little bit into the future, say, one second. Then we can do it again, and again, and again, until we have an accurate estimate of the trajectory. While there is no general recipe for finding the trajectories of the bodies, some special cases do exist. The first of these were found by Euler, who noted that when bodies were arranged in a line, like so, there were simple solutions in which they always remained in a line. Later, Lagrange found two more sets of solutions, in which bodies form equilateral triangles instead of lines. These special solutions are occasionally seen in nature, or close estimates thereof, and are of direct consequence astronomically. No further solutions to the three-body problem were found until the 1980s, during which computers were put to the task of looking for other stable solutions. The solutions that the computers were able to find are extremely intricate and too complicated for humans to have ever found on their own. Take this one for example, which forms a figure eight or this one, which forms an even more abstract curve. These two, discovered in the 1970s, exhibit simpler but no less precarious dynamics during their orbits. While these special solutions are beautiful, they are not likely in nature because of another special characteristic of this problem, chaos. Three-body problems are extremely sensitive to initial conditions. Say for example that I place three bodies on the plane, like so. Let's give each of them some initial velocity as well. And now let's let them go and see what happens.
Now let's go back. If we alter the setup ever so slightly, say change the velocity of this body just a little bit, and let it go again, we see that the evolution of the system is much different. Physical systems that act this way are called chaotic, and they are of great interest to physicists and mathematicians alike. There is, in fact, an entire field of mathematics, aptly named chaos theory, dedicated to the study of such systems. In most cases, three-body systems in random configurations break apart. This system, for example, sends all three particles off into the abyss. Some, like this one, eject one body and then form a stable binary system. Last year, physicists used the math of chaos theory to characterize these ejections, and found that almost all three-body problems end with a binary system, suggesting that we might find candidate binary systems which could once have been in a three-body system. Deepening our understanding of these systems could then potentially provide more detail about how star systems evolve. Because the ejected stars from these systems move with very high velocities, we call them hypervelocity stars, or sometimes runaway stars. These stars are predicted to arise from many different gravitational interactions, including, but not limited to those found in three-body systems. We have found and observed many such stars over the last few decades. This diagram, courtesy of NASA, shows about 20 known hypervelocity stars in our galaxy. Those shown in red are thought to have originated within our galaxy, while those in orange are thought to be extragalactic and are of great interest for their insights into the properties of faraway galaxies. This is also great science fiction fodder. Take for instance this headline, which suggests using hypervelocity stars to hitch a ride out of our galaxy. Unfortunately, if a hypervelocity star came close enough to us, we would probably be in need of an entirely new solar system to call home. But nonetheless, it's an interesting idea. Before I go, I want to leave you with my favorite three-body solution. This one, published in 2017, looks a lot like a snowflake. Because more complicated orbits require more accurate computation, this one is composed of over 3 million estimates which took my computer a couple of hours to complete. One final note. The three-body problem was actually solved in 1912 by a Finnish mathematician named Carl Sudman, just 30 years after the famed mathematician Henrik Poincaré declared to the world that it was impossible. Unfortunately, Sudman's solution comes as an infinite sum of very complex terms and is, for all intents and purposes, completely useless. In fact, it would take a computer several decades to compute a three-body problem by Sudman's method to the level of accuracy I was able to present in this video. Regardless, though, here's to Carl for sticking it to the man.